Now then, welcome back to another episode on the Hypermine Infinity Evolved server. Today, I'm working on making this suit, this nano suit, to my right here. Or to my right, to your right, my left. That's the way. Making this suit fly. And I've encountered a few problems along the way. There's a lot of things have changed with IC2. And I wish I could fly. And it, the gravitation suite requires some awesome things that are new. Um, well, a new automation is required in order to create and craft some of the things. Um, I've even tried wearing this crane thing on my head. And that doesn't allow me to do much flying either. Uh, the only reason I can fly at the minute is because of the IC2 basic electric jetpack. And that is only just about keeping up. I have to keep charging it back up because it only contains 30k at a time. And that's a pain in the butt to keep coming back and charging up. Especially when I'm doing something and then all of a sudden the backpack runs out or the jetpack runs out of power. And I have to come back and recharge it. Um, I'm going to be looking at upgrading the nano chest plate into an advanced nano chest plate from the gravitation suite which holds 3 million EU and allows me to fly and hover and do all that kind of stuff. Yes there are other methods of flight in the game I know but I'm trying to do things with IC2 this time around and this suit over here well to upgrade it I need to do a lot of things. First of all first of all to power it I need a lot of things. To put a million EU in each, it says there's a tier 3 power there, right? Just at the top of each of the suits, it says power tier 3, right? And uh, you used to be able to just do it in a power tier 1 backpack. You used to be able to charge everything IC2 in a backpack. So long as it's EU, it would charge just at different rates. And now you need power tier 1, power tier 2, a CESU, and power tier 3 is an MFE. So an MFE has to be used to charge the nano suit because that's a tier 3 power. And wow, oh wow, did that take a long time to do with this little setup I've got? I've got three generators here just feeding into this one MFE. Um, I left it for an overnight and it filled up all of these things and then I started filling up and away we went. It's sorted eventually. But still, uh, and now it's full again with uh, is that 4 million. 100,000, 100,000, yeah, million. 4 million EU is sitting in there ready to recharge a full suit when I need to. However, that does not help me to fly. That just helps me run around and be protected in the nano armor. And the nano armor takes the damage instead of these diamond leggings and stuff. I don't think I can enchant them either, which is uh, a pain in the butt as well, but never mind. Uh, this advanced chest plate though, right? So, we've got... Advanced circuits, which I've already got auto-programmed. We've got carbon plates, which I've already got auto-programmed. We've got the nano suit body armor, which I've technically already got programmed, but I've also got a pair ready, or a suit ready. And we've got these glass fiber cables. Glass fiber cables, some of that energinium dust, some pulverized silver, and some glass. Should be easy to do. I just need to set up a glass operation and a silver dust recipe to make glass fiber cables a thing. That, that's super simple. The hard part comes when it gets to this advanced electric jetpack from Gravitational Suite, which requires a normal jetpack, some carbon plates, some of that glass fiber, an advanced circuit, all easy enough. But this middle row here is the difficult stuff. The advanced lap pack is not too difficult because it takes an energy pack, an advanced circuit, and a laptron crystal. The Laptron Crystal, a couple of energy cells, one of those energy crystals, um, uh, advanced circuit should I say. Some Lapis Luzula dust makes that easy enough. That's same, uh, kind of simple. The advanced jet pack, jet lap pack. The advanced lap pack is kind of easy, that's alright. Uh, but then there's these item boosters, I've got to get two of these ready. And this is where it gets interesting, okay. Uh, glowstone, advanced alloy, advanced circuits, and advanced heat vents, all auto-craftable, all sorted out in my uh, system so far. But the overclocker upgrade. The overclocker upgrade was something I was considering for the machines that I've already been placing as well. But this overclocker upgrade re is required to get this engine booster. And an overclocker upgrade looks fairly simple, doesn't it? 
a couple of copper cables, an electronic circuit, all basics like the tier one IC2. And then coolant cells should be no problem. They used to be no problem. They used to be just something water inside them. But now there's tin plate around a coolant cell. And a coolant cell requires IC2 coolant. And there's no real NEI recipe telling me how to get coolants into cells and stuff. Other than putting coolants in a fluid transposer. But how do you make the IC2 coolant in the first place? Well, I've had to do a bit of research. And uh, this is where we're coming into today. Uh, trying to make it work. I've done the research, but I haven't tested it. So this could be a big issue, big problem. Uh, first things first. We need to generate steam. Now, I've already got a steam producing factory that's producing a ton of steam to make the big turbines give me all the RF I need. But just to see how hard it is in IC2 these days, let's have a look at um let's have a look at trick might help there we go uh let's have a look at an electric heat generator i need to generate heat okay so this looks okay i guess yeah kind of okay this is a heat generator i need some copper plates so let's get some plates ready we'll have uh three copper plates made please Let's make 10 just to be on the safe side, because we can. All right, so that's that part. Uh, heat, let's put heat in. Does that work faster for me? Yeah, it does. Okay, so we've got the electric heat generator. We've got the electric circuits, no problem. We've got the iron casings, no problem. We've got the RE battery, no problem. And we're just about to start doing that heat conductor, or yeah. So that takes in EU and generates heat okay that's the first stage then we've got to do something to make it steam or steam we've got to get a steam generator right and a steam generator takes the heat and takes water from a water source a copper boiler a copper boiler and then it takes that heat and water and turns it into steam okay i think i can skip all this with my current ste steam generation but still we're gonna we're gonna make one anyway just to see what happens right so i've got those that's no problem yeah good good and then we've got to go down the route of putting that into a condenser and a condenser is also a fairly simple piece of kit basic machining iron blocks empty cells and things like that no problem empty cells are simply a tin plate in a metal former makes an empty cell no problemo and uh, a simple electronic circuit and so on and so on and so on no problems there and then we need a canning machine to put the condensed um steam into well actually it's condensing was it condensing it's condensing and heating and then putting stuff into a canning machine Oh man, so much stuff. Uh, canning machine, which again is simple to make, to then can the IC2 coolant. So I think the most important part is the condenser itself, right? And getting the condenser working. So I'm going to do a bit of crafting and sorting out to make all the things do all the things that I want. And once I've got those machines, I'm going to have to figure out how to automate it all to make these cells on the AE system, so I can craft cells as and when I need them. Well, alrighty then. So, we have got the electronic heat generator, the steam generator, the condenser, the fluid canning machine, uh, some coils to go in the electric heater, some water for the steam generator, and some heat vents for the condenser, a uh, fluid ejector upgrade and some empty fluid cells. Yeah, fluid ejector is for the condenser. And the fluid canning machine needs some empty cells, I think. As far as I understand it, this will work. Now, what I'm looking at now is powering them. This one is a power of 0 to 100 EU per tick. 
This is whatever it looks like. It doesn't use EU. This one is... Uh, it uses up to 32, but can receive 128. And this one is a maximum of 32. So overall, I've got to use a maximum of 32. Now, uh, yeah, well, that'll do, I suppose. So I've just been making up some cables. And I've picked up 30 tin cables, which is 32 EU per tick. And I do believe that this MFE, even though it can output... 512 i think it can probably do a transfer down into low voltage at 32 and that's where i've got most of my power at the minute you see but for now let's just take this and i think i keep all the power if i do it like this and i'm going to put it into this room as a rough area i'm going to do a a rough design and then try and fit it in nicely and make it look cool afterwards because uh, I haven't got the time I would like to be able to do it properly. Yeah, there we go. We've got some power in there. That's good. So let's start by setting this off like this. There we go. So <clears throat> so the bat box can give out 32 EU per tick. The cable can take 32 EU per tick. And the machines can all stand 32 EU per tick. So let's see how they work. So first up, the electric heat generator. This takes power. It's doing that. And it generates heat. We've got to add coils into in to increase the heat output. And that's why I got all these coils. They're pretty simple. I'd already got auto crafted on those. And I quickly spread those out there. And boom. Currently transmitted heat and max transferable heat. So it's got zero heat currently of max 100. I don't know why it's not generating heat. But but it looks like it should be. That looks how it's supposed to be. Anyway, we'll we'll leave it like that. We'll move on. We'll see what see what's next. And it looks like this is the output. So can I rotate? Yes, I can rotate that way. Okay, that looks like an output, doesn't it? That looks like a front. That looks like the front. That looks like the sides. And that looks like an output. I guess. It received energy anyway. I don't know whether we've done this right, but still. Let's check out the steam generator and see if it works next to it. Uh, steam generator. There we go. Are you receiving heat? Import. It's receiving 100 heat per tick, according to that. Okay, and that's now gone to 32 heat units. And that's input 32 heat units. And that heat is rising. Okay. I've never seen one of these inside before, so I don't really know what's going on. Um, but I guess there's going to be an input for a water somewhere. This is also... Oh, that's stopped. Stopped its input. Why has it stopped its input? Probably because I ran out of energy. Dang it. Dang it, dang it, dang it. Okay, that's going to take a lot of energy then. That's used a lot of energy to generate a small amount of heat. Um, I think it was up to 100. So when I was receiving 32 energy, it was only able to deal 32 heat units. Okay, well, we can we can do something about that. We can give it a little bit more energy, but I don't want to waste all of my time and resources on that quite just yet. Let's take a, a generator and a stack of coal. I'm not going to be doing it like this. I think I need to do some generation of power a lot better so let's just throw that in there to to boil it up a bit that's going to do like 10 heat units per tick that is isn't it yeah so that's not going to be great but still this will slowly rise no it's slowly falling not slowly rising well dang it um um okay well let's continue putting blocks down and see what we get i can uh increase the power out later okay so this is a condenser and it's supposed to receive steam is it receiving power i think it's not going to receive power because there's only one bat box powering it at the minute which is a bit sad but true um do i have to wait until everything's all powered up nicely before i do anything i would love to be able to transfer energy from my rf into eu so I'm going to need a lot of EU. 
and this is not going to work, is it? If I don't have a lot of EU coming in. So maybe I've got to do something about that first before I start messing about with this. Uh, we'll put that on there and we'll set it to output. So that this receives water. Yeah, it's filled up with water nicely there. Okay. So what's this? Water input per tick. Let's go up 10 millibuckets of water per tick. 20, 30, 40. What difference does it make? I don't know. If the heat's there, I don't know. One, two, three, four, five bars. What is going to then make the thing? It's, it's something like that. You put the water in and you get the, the pressure valve. Okay, your pressure valve turns the heat into that. Okay. I just need a better heat source, really, don't I? Uh, and then it's going to come across to the condenser. That's starting to receive a bit of power now. And that will condense the the water into the next level and i think you've got to put these heat vents in uh yeah they just slot in there nicely okay and also a fluid ejector i think goes in somewhere as well where does that go over there okay automatically outputs to the first valid side and i'm guessing that then i make this canning machine sit just there and that then receives the fluid and it's getting some power. It receives the fluid and passes that along in through empty cells and out the other side. We've got to see it in working order first though. I've got to try and get some more heat going on and get some more power going. So let me have a look around and see what we can do with that. Okay, so everything's running smoothly. I made some geothermal generators and got the lava, infinite lava source coming in through an ender tank to feed them and give that extra 20 EU a tick going into the heat generator, making the heat generator work like a hundred, um, a hundred heat units per tick, which is helping this a great deal, turning the water into steam. I do have this bark slowly increasing. Um, we're getting a build-up of lime scale inside it, it seems. But I don't know how to remove that yet. I will see about that another time. Uh, the steam then is moving straight into here. And this condenser is taking the steam. Now, I've got a space here that I could possibly use an ender tank to transfer steam from my steam boilers, railcraft boilers, directly into here. And then that would make it a lot more of a simple system. But the heat generator into the steam generator into the condenser seems to be the way it's supposed to be and this condenses the steam down into water which is purified uh, and the purified water or the distilled water goes into this tank here and the empty cells are sitting there waiting to be sorted you've got to change it to fluid enrich there's a few other options like canning drain from cell fill cell from tank or fluid enriched and it's fluid enriched that we want. And in order to make the actual coolant cells, we need lapis. And we need a load of lapis dust to be able to do that. And that makes the coolant that then gets made into the cells. It's quite a, a long-winded process now. It used to be very, very simple as I remember it. But now it's a long-winded process to get these little cells. And what I'll do is I'll set this up with the AE system soon enough and I'll show you next episode how I end up doing it. Uh, but the water going in, we've got 2,100 there at the minute. Let's see how much it takes to fill per cell. 1,000, so it's like a bucket's worth of distilled water needs processing to make one coolant cell. And we need three coolant cells to make one overclocker. Uh, well, actually, yeah, make two overclockers it seems yes so i put these in over here and then we'll take a look at overclocker <clears throat> i've got two in there already because i've already tested it out but you get these 10k coolant cells the 10k coolant cells is one of those coolant cells surrounded by tin plates so easy enough and the other components now are easy enough as well so we've got the ability to make these overclockers and i've already programmed it to be able to craft those for me as well so the next stage really is for me to make the advanced jetpack. 
Most of these things are easy enough to make. It's just a, a bit of a struggle, time consuming to get all the crafting recipes in place to do these things. Uh, the advanced heat vent, I don't think I've got yet, no. I've got the uh, heat vent being made. I've got two heat vents. But to make an advanced heat vent, we need diamond in the middle and some iron bars. So I think I've got some iron bars, but it doesn't seem to register vanilla items very well. Let's make 10. That'll get 16. That'll do that. And then throw these down here. Seem to have to keep putting vanilla ingredients into this for the IC2 crafting to take place. So the advanced heat generator is now there. I've got a little interface here so I can quickly put things into the crafting grids uh, wherever I want them fairly swiftly. So now we should be able to have heat generate there. So we'll get one of those. Thank you. And it's done already. And then we should be able to make that jetpack part, which is that. Uh, okay, well, I definitely had one of those heat things made a minute ago. So why are you not adding it? I don't know. It's still not working. Advanced heat vent. Okay, maybe I've got something wrong here. Jet pack. That, that. Advanced heat vent from Industrial Craft 2. 4226. How do I make that? That's how I make it. 4226 1. It's, it's got a wrong metadata. Hmm. I wonder if there's a way around that then. It makes that, which is what it says it does. That is that. So can I convert it the other way around? Can I take this out and put it into my crafting grid to get rid of one? So that you'll recognize it as a crafting recipe? No, I can't do that. So why is it not doing it for me? Why is it not ignoring the metadata? It's on crafting pattern. It's all crafting. Let's take the glowstone and that out and try it in a normal workbench. So we've got those there. Then we've got the alloys, which was there, there, and there, I think. Yeah. Then the heat. Advanced heat vent was there. So... It, it makes it struggle when you're trying to auto craft things like this. The two advanced cells and an overclocker. Okay, let's overclock. We want two of these eventually, but for now we'll just do one of each. Just to try and figure out why the crafting recipe is not working. Got those two advanced ones there. Awesome. Okay, and can we get a crafting table? I don't seem to have a crafting table here. I've got one downstairs. Let me just nip down and check that one out. I hardly ever use vanilla crafting tables anymore, you see. Uh, let's use this one over here. Okay, so in theory, this is the right recipe. Why it won't make it, I don't know. Maybe it's a bug in the mod pack. Maybe it's just something that needs adding in. This advanced heat vent, the recipe requires the 4226. And this is a 44. 42261, which is not right. And it doesn't want to do it. It does not want to do it. So, hmm. Recipe for that. Definitely gives me that one. Or I could take that, which is the same thing. It's the only crafting recipe available to it. That to that. Okay. That, uh,. Is it the other one? No. The industrial diamond. Does the industrial diamond make it different? No, it doesn't. Oh, right. So now I'm stuck on a new issue. That's telling me that's the crafting recipe for the vent that I need to make. That vent there. Yep. But it's not going through properly. Maybe I've done something wrong. Maybe I will never get it fixed. I don't know, but I will try and try again, and I'll let you know next episode to see if we've got any further to get in the gravitation suite working for us. Otherwise, I will be left with this silly helicopter on my head using this standard electric jackpack to do all of my flying around. 
Hopefully IC2 is not completely broken. Uh, well, I say completely broken, not broken in that particular sense of the word. And hopefully I can get a lot more done in IC2 this way. Until next episode, though, thank you very, very much for watching. I will see you in the next episode of Hypermine Infinity Evolved. Until then, a goodbye.